sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide is a polar compound and that is because the structure is like this. So it's a polar compound is an aprotic uh, compound. It's not going to liberate hydrogen ions. It's a good solvent for ions. Um, it, it's an inert solvent uh, for organic compounds and also for covalent inorganic substances. So that's nice because it will not react with the substance. It will just solvate it. And um, it, it, it can be used for... Um, for stabilizing, for synthesizing some particularly difficult uh, species to, um, to um, um, stabilize in group 16 and 17. And for example, you've got, it can stabilize the species like the uh, tri and, and penta uh, iodine ions. Uh, so it can be, although it has a limited, limited use, uh, it can be really useful for particular particular reactions. Ammonia is um, a really interesting solvent. It is toxic, which clearly limits the um, its uh, its um, ability. You know, ability to be used as a solvent. Uh, it has an interesting, uh, a, a good um, uh, dielectric constant, relative permittivity. It, uh, it, it's a self-ionizing uh, compound, uh, it's a protic compound, it has, um, um, uh, it has a good dipole moment, the melting and boiling points, the range in which it is a liquid is limited with respect to what water would be, and, um, and it has a similar density to, to water. Um, the, it's the electric constant, it's relative permittivity, it, it, it is not bad, but it's definitely smaller than water, so it's not as good dissolving ionic compounds as water. The um, exception is, um, uh, well, some iodide, the, the iodide salts, but also ammonium salts because then it's an acid-base reaction and, and, and it will facilitate the solvation of those salts. Organic compounds tend to be more soluble in ammonia than they are in water. It undergoes self-ionization as, uh, as uh, water does and uh, just a reminder, uh, it produces uh, when it self ionizes, it produces the anamide, uh, an ion, and an ammonium ion, and it can be used in, um, in neutralization reactions. And when you use it in a neutralization reaction, acid plus, uh, plus base equals sal uh, it produces salt and water, that would be in water, well, in ammonia, um, acid uh, plus base will produce salt and ammonia. It's a really good solvent for reactions that require a strong base. So it can be used quite effectively in inorganic synthesis because the amide ion, this one here, is strongly basic. So if you're doing a reaction that requires that strong basic medium, it's a good solvent for that. It has some interesting properties that uh, water doesn't have. For example, if we look at this acid, it's called sulfamic acid. In water, sulfamic acid behaves like a monoprotic uh, acid. It has one hydrogen that is acidic, so it reacts with, uh, with water producing hydrogen ions and, well, the corresponding anion. And that's it, that's the reaction. However, in liquid ammonia, it can function as dibasic or a, a diprotic acid. And that is because um, in liquid ammonia, there are two hydrogens, potentially three, but the third one doesn't come out, um, that, can be, that can be removed, that can be, one is this one, and the other one is one of these. So yes, it can produce as uh, as the and the reaction in water this uh, this species, this anion, 
but it can also and uh, liberating uh, the corresponding Uh, you know, uh, with the amide accepting that hydrogen ion, but it can also uh, behave as a second, uh, as a, it can also donate a second hydrogen, um, uh, which is one of these. So you end up with, uh, with this anion. And having donated another uh, another hydrogen to the amide uh, and it stops here it doesn't lose the third one so while in water it can only uh, it, it only it only behaves as monoprotic in in liquid ammonia it behaves as uh, as diprotic which is mm, interesting it's a good solvent um, for um, group one and group two metals so alkalines are earth alkalines they are stable or metastable in dissolving liquid ammonia which is good because as you remember the reaction with water is highly explosive and, and dangerous um group one metal sodium pot potassium sodium etc can be recovered as the metals the group two metals, the earth alkalines, uh, calcium, strontium, uh, barium, are recovered uh, as, uh, in a um, solvated uh, form. So no as metal, but metal with six uh, ammonium molecules. Um, it's very widely used, uh, for example, sodium in liquid am ammonia is used in organic synthesis as a very good reducing agent. And... Um, Sometimes uh, it can be used um, for the synthesis of macrocyclic compounds. Um, again, in because of the fact that uh, you can stabilize alkali and earth alkali metals in liquid ammonia. So it's a way that allows us to use group one and group two metals as reducing agents in a more stable solution. You would not be able to use them in, in water and you can in, because of this, uh, this, the reaction is explosive, uh, but you can in ammonia. Hydrogen fluoride is a protic uh, solvent if self ionizes and here you've got the, the two ions it, it produces, dihydrofluorine plus uh, ion and difluorohydrogenate uh, an ion. So it's missing a negative charge here. Uh, it has a problem that is very corrosive. It's a very strong um, uh, corrosive agent. So it cannot be used in, in glass and you need to use PTFE uh, containers. It has, because it self ionizes, it has an acid base chemistry uh, of a protic, as a protic solvent. And when a substance produces the dihydrofluorine cation, then that substance will behave as an acid in fluoridic acid. And when a species or when a, when a substance produces dihydrogenate anion, uh, when dissolving hydrogen in fluoridic acid, then it will behave as a base. It can be useful in organic synthesis. Many organic compounds are soluble in liquid, uh, in liquid hydrogen fluoride or fluoridic acid. Um, it can be used uh, in synthesis with amines uh, and carboxylic acids to give uh, protonated, uh, protonated species. Um, a substance like ammonium fluoride uh, which uh, we mentioned, for example, in ammonia um, was an acid because it releases um, the ammonium um, ion. In, in fluoridic acid, it's a base. Um, it it uh, will release this, uh, this fluoride. In general, uh, um, most uh, protic acids, what uh, typical acids that would be acids in water, will not 
act as acids in liquid uh, hydrogen fluoride because of this competition between hydrogen fluoride and the acid itself as both being hydrogen uh, proton donors, hydrogen ion donors. So uh, it has a strong tendency to liberate uh, hydrogen ions, so it curtails the ability of other acids to, um, to donate uh, hydrogen ions. Um, only acids like perchloric acid or fluorosulfonic acid act as acids uh, in when you when dissolving hydrogen fluoride. So I'm going to write here uh, the reaction of of sulfonization of um, um, hydrogen fluoride just to, so you have it in the same slide uh, and the two ions it uh, it releases. Now I'm going to ask you to do this reaction. What would be the the reaction between perchloric acid, uh, sorry, um, fluorosulfonic acid, which is that one, and hydrogen fluoride, uh, when fluorosulfonic acid act as an acid? So stop the video now and give the answer to this reaction. Fluorosulfonic acid plus hydrogen fluoride. Uh, what would be the products of that reaction? when fluorosulfonic acid act as an acid, uh, as an acid in this case. Stop the video now, please. So if I know that fluorosulfonic acid act as an acid, dissolving hydrogen fluoride, then as an acid, it will donate um, hydrogen ions and it will produce this species, um, well, this an, an ion. And that hydrogen will be added to the hydrogen fluoride to produce the species, the, cation, the cationic species of the, of the solvent. So yes, it is an acid, it will, it will contribute to the cationic, cation, cation species of the, of in this case, hydrogen fluoride. 